So if you know much about my my history, I've been working with software patterns now for just shy of 30 years. I got my start in 1993 when I was a reviewer for the famous Gang of Four book, the book about uh, pattern-oriented reuse design approaches. And I've done, I've written a lot of books on patterns. I've given a lot of talks on patterns, written a lot of papers on patterns and written a lot of software that's influenced by patterns. And it's worth just noting briefly that Spring and Spring Boot has a whole slew of design patterns that influence the way that it works. Now, the key thing you need to understand to make any sense of Spring is this software pattern called convention over configuration which I've never honestly quite understood why it says that, but that's what it says, convention over configuration. Leaving aside whether that's a good name or not, the goal of using this particular approach, this pattern-oriented approach to building software, is to be able to create web apps by refining some general reusable blueprints. And so the idea is if you, you think broadly about what it means to build a web app and you design a framework with various tools, and uh, all kinds of other things like annotation-based generation, code generators, and so on. You can do a lot of really cool stuff. And uh, this will help you to be able to leverage these patterns in a way that makes it easier to write the applications without building it all from scratch in an ad hoc way every time. Software frameworks like Spring use the convention over configuration software pattern to help decrease the number of decisions that developers who use the framework have to make without sacrificing flexibility. There's always a trade-off, as I'm sure you know, between providing people with a basically a template that's kind of prescriptive. It says what to do or what not to do, proscriptive. Uh, and it maybe sometimes locks you into a Procrustean bed where things only work a certain way. And so part of the goal of using this, this pattern is you get a lot of stuff out of the box without having to do much work. But if you really need to make some changes, you can do so. And that's kind of the special sauce that makes this approach flexible, but also gives you a lot of reuse. So here are some of the things that fall under the configuration or convention over configuration pattern. One is have reasonable default behavior. So for example, if you have a, a model where you're defining the persistence portion of your architecture, things you want to persist between runs of your application, if there's a class called sales in the model, then there should be a corresponding table in the database that's called sales by default. So it's, it's sometimes called the, the principle of least surprise or least astonishment. However, if you don't want to have a table called sales, but you want to call it product sales, there should be some way of being able to write code or provide a configuration file or whatnot that makes it possible to name things and associate things in a different way. So what I like to say is that these these frameworks give you a lot of commonality, but they don't make it impossible to do stuff that you didn't anticipate when you were thinking about the framework. And that's just good design. I wouldn't even say object-oriented design, just good design principles in general. Another goal of convention over configuration is to eliminate distractions. And this is oh so important. And you'll see this particular theme rear its lovely head over and over again. Uh, for example, when you program with, with Spring and you're comfortable with both the client side and then the, the microservices part in the back or even the monolithic part in the back, depending on what kind of architecture you choose. There's really no need to care or even be aware of how to perform low level network programming. And in many cases, you don't even have to think much about concurrency. A lot of those things are handled for you by the framework. So you just focus pretty much on defining your interfaces and then using some special annotations, which we'll look at here shortly. And then lots of stuff is generated for you, which is kind of magic. And kind of as I alluded to before, one of the nice things about using the convention over configuration pattern is it reduces the number of decisions that you have to make. Just as a simple example, as we'll see repeatedly, you don't have to hand code the implementations of fields in your classes. Those things can be auto-wired together using various dependency injection tools. And so what it means is you have less to deal with. You, you can focus on implementing your code and you can leave it up to the framework or to the infrastructure to wire all the different pieces together. 
when things go well, this is wonderful. When things go poorly, then you're often somewhat perplexed because there's all kinds of implicit dependencies that can be a little bit mystifying to try to debug. We will do our best with the skeletons we give you to help make that uh, something you don't have to fret too much about, but just be aware if you design your own software from scratch, you have to deal with all these dependencies and it can be a little bit tricky at times. So that's the end of the quick overview of some of Spring Boot's design patterns, focusing primarily on this concept of convention over configuration.